Digikey Native Okay, I on MPI brought to you by Digikey Native for this week. It's FTDI. Wait, Ada. That's right, FTDI chip. Uh, it's one of our favorite electronic chip companies. One of our first breakout boards was for the FT232R, uh, which is from FTDI chip. Um, they're an awesome company, and uh, we know that the, the CEO, we interviewed them. Uh, check out our blog. Uh, it was many, many years ago, but we did interview them. Um, so uh, FTDI, uh, they released a whole bunch of cool new chips um, that improve on uh, some well-known chips that they've had, the FT22. 32 and the FT232, uh, which are kind of popular. So uh, let's let's go take a look at them. Um, so uh, this is what the chips look like. So the ones I'm going to look at, there's a whole family, but I'm going to look specifically at the FT232HP and the 233HP. And that the P is the important part. So what's what's the P stand for? The P stands for power delivery. So the, the FT232H, which is a, a chip that we've used a lot, has now been upgraded to add USB 3.0 Type-C power delivery specification support. What that means is that um, it still is a USB device. It's a high-speed USB device. It can uh, do all sorts of peripheral communication like people love from the FT232 series. Um, but what it's added is also the CC1 and the CC2 pins um, that are used to request higher voltages and higher currents from a USB port. And that can be uh, really useful if you're doing a, a product and you need more than, say, 5 watts or 5 volts of power. Um, so the FT232H, you might be like, hey, that sounds really familiar. That's right. We have a breakout board for the FT232H. Uh, we recently actually even revised it. And when we revised it here, I want to show, you know, it's got I2C and it's got those 8 GPIO pins. Actually, sorry, it's got like 16 total eight G GPIO pins. It's got lots of GPIO, and it's got um, I squared C, and it's got SPI, and it's high speed, and it can do um, JTAG, and it can do 8 bit parallel. And we updated it here to add that USB C port on the left. But I want to note that the, this board, the H, not the HP, um, all it does is have two 5K resistors on the CC lines to tell the host device, hey, this is a 5-volt USB device. It doesn't do any power delivery negotiation, which actually requires like a separate microcontroller, basically. It's, it's actually quite complicated to do. So um, in this case, you would not be able to use this board to get more than 5 volts out of USB-C. Just because it uses the USB-C connector doesn't necessarily mean it fulfills the, whole, the full USB-C spec. Um, so just watch out for that. You see something with the USB-C connector, the connector is just the physical shape, that's type C. Whether or not it actually connects to the CC pins uh, to do the power delivery specification, well, you're gonna have to read the data sheet for that. Um, so if you do look, uh, there's two versions of this board. There's the 232, which has, I think, eight GPIO plus a couple, and then the 233, which has the 16 GPIO you might be used to. Um, and you can see on the pinout here that they have CC1 and uh, CC2 connections. Um, the 64 pin one has both sync and source. And uh, I think we'll watch a video at the end which actually shows a demo of the syncing and sourcing. So if you get the 64 pin version, the 233, it has two USB-C ports and it can like go bi-directionally. The 56 pin one is only um, a port sync, it can only request data, it can't supply data. Uh, sorry, it can only request power, it cannot negotiate with something that's requesting power. So USB-C is like that. Again, the port's the same on both sides, but the data, it's not bi-directional. Each side has a sync and a source. Um, and here's how you wire it up. So you, need, you definitely will want, of course, a USB-C connector, because if you have a USB-C connector, you can wire up the CC1 and the CC2 pins. That's what's used uh, to do the um, negotiation with the power supply or the laptop or the computer to get those higher voltages and higher currents. Okay, but besides that, it does, uh, the, the way you actually program the power delivery uh, is kind of interesting. So there is this program you can use, I know I use it in Windows called FTDI Prog, but I think they have it for other um, operating systems as well. And then you connect an EEPROM to some of the chips of the FT232HP, and inside there you tell it 
you know, do you want to have an I squared C peripheral? So you have a microcontroller that it can connect and tell it what it wants. Does it want 12, 12 volts or 15 or 20? Does it want three amps or one amp? Or you can use GPIO pins and you can set up the GPIO pins um, from within FT, FTDI prog. So you'll have to do that once, but once it's programmed, then you can use the GPIO pins uh, to, to control and, and connect how much voltage and current you're requesting. Um, okay, so in addition to all of the USB-C power delivery stuff, the FT232 still has all the really great GPIO. That's what we really want from the chip. It's, it's not just a power delivery chip, it has GPIO. And so there's all these capabilities it has for all the GPIO pins. Um, for example, you can hook it up as an RS-422. It can be an RS-232 UART. Uh, it can act even as an RS-485. These are you know, pretty common things you want to convert to USB. But again, remember, now you can also request 12 volts power from it. So if you have an RS-485 device uh, that is controlled or controlling RS-485 and also wants 12 volt power, you don't need a separate power supply. You can get that all over USB-C. Very nice, very integrated. Um, so this is all the extra functionality. It's got that uh, USB 2.0 high-speed connectivity. So you can send data back and forth pretty fast. If you have it in the parallel FIFO mode, you can go up to 40 megabytes per second, which is incredibly fast for a USB peripheral. Um, it also has JTAG, I2C, um, SPI, BitBang, UART, and then you know a couple of different parallel uh, port methods. Um, they have libraries you can use in C and Python, and then we also, of course, have our Blinka library. Now, I haven't been able to get this chip because I don't know if you're aware, but there's a global chip shortage. But when I do, I'm going to make sure that it works with Blinka so you can use it with our CircuitPython libraries because it's super fun to connect this board over USB and then program it through the computer. So no microcontroller programming is required at all. This is a very fully integrated device. I think there's a lot of products you get rid of the DC power supply, you can get rid of the microcontroller firmware programming, have it all done by the FT232 or 233. Um, so uh, I'll say, like I said, there's a global chip shortage. However, I did check the lead time and it looks like there's gonna be in about like four to six weeks, these will come into stock. So you can back order them or you can s sign up for notification and DigiKeys will let you know when it gets back into stock. Uh, again, there's two versions, the FT233, 64 pin, has an extra eight pins, kind of two, two digital ports, 232HP only has one digital port. All right, and it's available on DigiKey site. To sign up for, or back yeah. order. Um, so check it out, and uh, as soon as they're available, I'll definitely re-spin the board that um, we have for the FT232H. For the FT232HP, I think it'll be great. I mean, you can plug it in, get 20 volts, 12 volts. You could like power your robotics device and control it all over USB-C, which is short URL here. Sweet. And then get search for it there. Yes, the part number. And then we also have one minute video. Yes. In this demonstration, we have interfaced a light sensor to the FT4233H device. The board is connected to a laptop using port 1 on the left hand side. An application is also shown which is running on the laptop and is taking readings from the sensor. As you can see from the USB power meter connected in line, the board is also providing approximately 20 volts to the laptop to charge its battery. At the top of the board, we have a wall charger connected to port 2. This powers the board itself and also provides the charging current to the laptop via port 1. When we now unplug the wall charger from port 2, you can see that port 1 now switches role automatically to become the power provider. As you can see from the direction arrow on the USB power meter, the laptop is now providing 5 volt power to the application board. The data communication is unaffected by the change of power source and the laptop continues to take sensor readings. If we now connect the charger to port 2 again, the power delivery controller switches rolls back again. The charger now provides power to the board via port 2 and port 1 becomes a provider of power to the laptop again to charge the battery. The data communication between the laptop and the sensor continues uninterrupted. That's this week's Ion MPI. All right, thank you, FTDI chip and DigiKey. Ion MPI.